The figurehead, the spark of this rabbit was a gentleman named Lonnie Frisbee. Very complicated individual to say the least. It's, again, just sheer body counts. Like these folks were wild. By body counts, I mean number of partners. These folks were wild. I entered into something that the Bible calls the born again experience. Yeah, like there was bona fide miracles happening around this time. It is a cautionary tale, man. Because you don't want your gift, your charisma, to, 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 to take you further than your character can sustain you. Bruce Lawn. And then if you guys want, I'll look up some Lonnie Frisbee stuff. You guys want to see the, uh, the real Lonnie Frisbee? What do you guys think? 1960s hippie movement worse than the sex positivity movement? I want to hear from you guys. I want to hear from you guys. Because from my understanding, these folks, if we're talking just body counts and just how promiscuous and wild they were, substantially worse than the kids today and the Gen Zers today and the Zoomers today. But anyway, that's the heels of this. These people are hippies, rebels against old-fashioned authority. I think these kids... Oh, rebels against old-fashioned authority. Sound familiar? Need help. They need is a bath. You're passing judgment on people you need <laughs> nothing about. Maybe that's why your church is so empty. When God walks in here, brings me a hippie. I'll ask him what it's all about. Because I do not understand. It's, again, just sheer body counts. Like, these folks were wild. By body counts, I mean number of partners. These folks were wild. We have some guests here today. I'd like you to meet my new friends. If a bunch of, I don't know, let's just create a character. And I don't, I don't like characters and broad generalizations, but let's just say like today at your church, if a bunch of folks, not like that, but what is the modern day equivalent of this? Libs on TikTok. Perfect. Thank you so much, Proverbs 31. If Libs on TikTok, think of the avatar for Libs on TikTok. If Libs on TikTok uh, showed up to your church and there was just a pack of them, how would your church react to them? Because I think the fact that folks had an issue with these folks going to church, it's kind of trash, right? It's kind of trash. Um, so, it's interesting, right? They don't belong here. Half of them aren't wearing shoes. They're staining the new shag carpet. They need our help. If you feel like... Was he really washing their shoes because they didn't want to ruin the carpet, or was he washing their shoes because you said wash each other's feet? That's an Misunderstood and judged. You will find forgiveness and freedom right here. That was awesome. I like that he said forgiveness and freedom because I think it's, they go hand in hand. Forgiveness for your sins and freedom to not be slaves to sin. We got to preach both. Can't just preach forgiveness without freedom. Can't preach forgiveness without repentance and following Jesus. Right? door is open any time of day and if there are some who don't like that well then that door works both ways all right i think some of you guys are romanticizing hippies and how peaceful they were granted they were they were uh pacifist but that doesn't mean that it was all good like th these folks caused a ton of havoc. think about when all this stuff happened this is no fault divorce laws this is birth control this is abortion all this stuff happened I'm not talking about the, the Christian side of things, but all this stuff happened on the other side of this. This was not like a net positive movement. I want to be very clear. A lot of drug use, a lot of folks losing their mind from LSD and like a lot of promiscuity, right? And then you get AIDS right after this where folks was, you know, swinging and jumping around and you know what I mean? Like this was not all uh, peaches and cream. Right. And so if you look at Gen Z per just interactions of partners, the number of partners they have, they have substantially less partners than the boomers did. Right. So this this movement caused a lot of deterioration to the modern nuclear family. OK, it's important that we acknowledge that. All right. Master, let's begin. So the fact that they're getting saved is a big deal. The fact that this broke out amongst this community is a big deal. The entire launch of this revival, I don't know how you would say it, the, 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 the figurehead, the spark of this revival was a gentleman named Lonnie Frisbee. Very complicated individual to say the least. So here's one of Lonnie Frisbee's last sermons, okay? So the guy that's John, the play by Jonathan, okay? This is one of Lonnie Frisbee's last sermons I'm gonna pull up. This is in the 90s. And the, the prophet of God told the people of Israel that they would practice cannibalism on their own offspring and that is exactly what they were doing the enemy closed them in round about all of the food supply were canceled all of their source of food was canceled out and they began to eat their babies and in this day that we're living in we're seeing sons eating their fathers and fathers eating their sons but it's a different kind of cannibalism so the, the, the Jews 
So that's Lonnie towards the end. That was the last sermon I could see of him. And again, he was supposed to go up there and say a few words for five minutes, and he ended up preaching for a while. Um, but check this out. So this is like some documentary stuff about Lonnie Frisbee. Behold, a sore went forth to sow, bearing precious seed in his hand. God is blowing everybody's mind <laughs> because he's saving, he's saving the, the hippies. And nobody thought a hippie could be saved. <laughs> God, if you're really real, reveal yourself to me. He just changed my life. I entered into something that the Bible calls the born-again experience. So he came to church that Sunday night, and the church was real small at that time. On Sunday evening, there might be 30 people, 40 people on a good night. And Lonnie made a hit. I mean, my parents begged him to come back. The blazing sun, the morning star, the spirit to lead the way. All fade together to be the gentle faith. I fear my souls in darkness, so I come here to pray to you, my beloved Jesus. This woman uh, leads, she starts leading this man in, and she said, we were over at Calvary Chapel, and they told us to come over here that somebody would pray for my husband, he's blind. He looks at the guy and he goes, in the name of Jesus Christ, you can see. And the man got his sight back. Everywhere. And by the way, I, I know that sounds nuts. I know that sounds crazy, but um, I, I, friends with Pastor Don Absher, he, he just retired, okay, they were about the same age, to, uh, Lonnie Frisbee would be, I think, 73 right now. And so Pastor Don was like, yeah, like there was bona fide miracles happening around this time. Now, I don't think someone has the, necessarily has the same gift of healing, but um, the fact that these sorts of things were happening, I think was just God moving in a unique way. You see what I'm saying? Like, it's not, I think this person was, had a, a, a special power. I think this person had, um, a God was doing something special and using this person. Does, does that make sense? Right? So, nevertheless, uh, let, let's watch the rest it would of this. Be, God was doing things. Lonnie was not wise enough. To and by the way, that's what kind of spurred a lot of this Jesus revolution with regards to the hippies getting saved. There was signs and wonders. I know that freaks some of you guys out. I understand that people constantly wanted to use him for his anointing and throw him away as a human being. Lonnie and Tears said, Daryl, nobody wants me in their church. He said, they like the goodies, Daryl, but they don't, but they hate me. You know, when people are willing to rip pages out of a history book? You know, I think that both. And they definitely cut him out out of a lot of the, the Calvary Chapel history stuff. My dad and, and John were like father figures to him, but fathers who rejected him. It was a hard thing for me to understand how he could party on Saturday night and preach on Sunday morning, and the Spirit of God moved. That's scary, man. That is scary that so that 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 someone could be in that position. And again, this is why I say this is a cautionary tale. It is a cautionary tale, man. Because you don't want your gift, your charisma to, to 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 take you further than your character can sustain you. You know? And uh and so anyway, this 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 guy ends up passing away. Uh he he was, you know, a closeted homosexual man, um, or or what you know, was on the down low and doing stuff. And people I guess people knew, um, to, to, to various degrees, they definitely knew he was wilding out, and so he ends up passing away in '93 of of um, complications from HIV/AIDS. That's weird if that's him at the hospital. And by the way, Chuck Smith ended up ends up speaking at his funeral, and they ended up reconciling. Come and listen to the message that I bring. The gifts are without repentance, but gift doesn't mean sanctification. You're dropping gems. It's hard. I'm, I'm, I'm honest with you guys. This is hard for me to talk about because it just, it just, it's, 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 I don't, I, how do, how do we process this? How do we process the move of God um, despite how sinful we are? So, uh, backstory. So, Lonnie was married for uh, a window of time to a woman, got divorced. A couple years later, and and was known to be on the down low, and was doing all kinds of wild stuff. And so, from the progressive crowd, from the liberal side, they love to. Um, Samson is exactly what Chuck Smith described him as. Described him as a Samson-like figure. Uh, the 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 if you Google uh, and you look up like 
articles on Medium or whatever, they love to say, oh, it's homophobia. It's because the church suppressed the sexuality. That's why he tragically died. It's, it's like, it's it's real goofy on that side. And on, on the Christian side, very few people will actually just talk about it and call, call it, well, it what it is. This You know, this man was out here, you know, um, this man was out here wilding out, you know? And apparently he had all kinds of issues in his childhood and trauma and whatever. At least that's that's what they said about him. Um, and uh, I think an autobiography came out. There's a couple documentaries made. I've watched quite a, quite a bit of stuff. And I, I've honestly just heard of him over the years to see um, him influence the Greg Lorries, influence the Mike McIntoshes. Mike McIntosh uh, hor planted Horizon Church in San Diego. Horizon Church in San Diego was planted by Pastor Don Absher, who was one of my pastors here at the Movement Church. Uh, Pastor Don did that plant with him then he came over and and was at the at the movement for like the last i don't know 15 20 years he was in ministry and uh <clears throat> Matt, pastor mike mcintosh did the horizon horizon had the rock come out of it then then there's obviously the calvary chapel influence and then there's obviously the vineyard influence um and uh there's 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 a lot there you know there's a, there's a lot there and so uh you know it's it, it, yeah it's just it's just interesting it's just interesting like the, like how god can use someone in a mighty way while they still can really be battling demons dealing with stuff you know it's uh it, yeah it's 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 rough you know and it said that simeon blessed god 